Hi, welcome back to another video. I bet you exercise for a lot of different health reasons, for weight loss, for general fitness, but not a lot of people exercise to prevent cancer, or if they have cancer, to improve the outcome. Well, according to the American Cancer Society guidelines on nutrition and physical activities for cancer prevention, getting more physical activities is associated with a lower risk of several types of cancers, including endometrial cancers, colorectal cancer, prostate, breast, lung cancer, ovarian cancer, gastric, and possibly pancreatic cancer. I have some really interesting data that I'm going to share with you in this video that not only shows an interesting connection between exercise and cancer prevention, but why it decreases the risk of cancer is very interesting. So watch till the end of this video and I will share with you how exercises can help to lower your risk of getting cancer. If you like this video and find this useful, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is completely free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. Thank you. So let me share with you a couple of little basics before I explain to you why and how exercise helps to prevent cancer. This is very complicated, but I will keep it simple. Number one thing you need to know is cancer occurs from a normal cell. And a normal cell obtains its energy through cellular respiration, which is a metabolic pathway that breaks down glucose and produces ATP using oxygen. This is aerobic glycolysis, the process by which cells use oxygen to help them convert glucose into energy. Cellular respiration takes place in the cytoplasm and mitochondria of each cell of the body. But cancer cells don't metabolize sugar the same way that healthy cells usually do. They use fermentation, which is done without oxygen. So it is anaerobic, which is much less efficient. This is because for various reasons, the mitochondria becomes dysfunctional in cancer cells, and then the cell flips its metabolism of glucose to the fermentation process. This is glycolysis without oxygen. So we have a normal cell that uses a lot of oxygen, and a cancer cell that doesn't have to use oxygen at all. It ferments things. Now, another difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell is that normal cells has a lot of mitochondria. In a cancer cell, the mitochondria are dysfunctional. They are either damaged or not working. Remember that mitochondrial structure and functional integrity defines the health of a cell by regulating cellular metabolism. Thus, mitochondria plays an important role in both cell proliferation and cell death. As such, a normal cell has a limited lifespan, so it cannot live forever. And one way that the body does this is through something called apoptosis, which is a controlled cell death. So a normal cell cannot keep growing. In cancer cells, however, they don't get the signal to create apoptosis, so they keep living on and on and on. A normal cell gets this trigger for apoptosis from a byproduct from the mitochondria. And it is a byproduct from using oxygen called ROS, that is a reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species plays an important role in the process of apoptosis in many cell types. So in cancer cells, the mitochondria are dysfunctional and unlike a normal cell, you have a deficiency of ROS. So put it really simply, the more oxygen that you can give to your cells, the more ROS or reactive oxygen species that you have to trigger apoptosis. This is why things that have low oxygen enhance cancer, like smoking for example. You're also decreasing oxygen in the body like an infection. Or in the case of inflammation, that is why cancers tend to invade areas of inflammation because there's less ROS to trigger apoptosis and it can grow more. This is another reason why cancer tends to grow in areas of old injuries too. And if someone is smoking and irritating the lungs, that would be like micro trauma. Now in chronic stress states, you have a lower amount of oxygen. And also in a high glucose state, so if someone is a diabetic or maybe they are consuming a lot of carbohydrates or running on their bodies on sugar or carbs, that is a lower oxygen state than a state where they are burning ketones or your fats. And so it is important to understand this, because if you have cancer or want to prevent cancer, there are things that you can do. For instance, get on a ketogenic diet. 
reduce consumption of your refined carbs such as dietary sugar. But the biggest thing that can increase oxygen and ROS is exercise. Exercise increases the oxygen 10 to 20 times and it can increase your ROS by 1000 times. So this is just another reason to exercise to prevent cancer. And again, if you have cancer, you should also be exercising. You are effectively flooding your body with oxygen. This is going to increase the byproduct ROS, which will help to create apoptosis to the cancer cells. Furthermore, exercise improves your blood sugar and insulin from an other angle. Because people who have insulin resistance, obesity are at a greater risk for getting cancer. In fact, being overweight or obese is a factor in an estimated 14% to 20% of cancer death in the United States. Losing even a small amount of weight has health benefits and is a good place to start. Another advantage to exercising is that when you're exercising, you aren't just sitting. Evidence is growing that sitting time, no matter how much exercise you get when you aren't sitting, increases the likelihood of developing several types of cancers, as well as obesity, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. And also, if you're exercising outdoors, you're getting vitamin D, which is known to decrease the risk of getting cancers. The other thing exercise will do is to the number of mitochondria, because within cancer cells, you just don't have enough mitochondria to produce oxygen and the ROS. Lastly, exercise will improve your immune system, the very thing that fight off cancer, because there are two types of cells in the immune system that kill the cancer cells directly. Now the question is, how much exercise do you need? Adults should get at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity each week, preferably spread throughout the week. But even lower amounts of activity can help. If you haven't exercised in a while, it makes sense to start slowly and build up gradually. Well, the next question is, what sort of exercises are good for cancer prevention? Well, aerobic exercises, especially running, may reduce cancer risk by 72%. Researchers say high-intensity exercises can help to reduce the risk and recurrence of cancer. Exercise may work by increasing the glucose demand from internal organs and starving tumours of the essential fuel. So basically, this exercise induces reprogramming of healthy tissues, increases competition for glucose, which is a primary source for cancer cells, thus stealing vital energy from the cancer cells. Although running may be the most beneficial exercise, but swimming, cycling, and rowing are also helpful. Being active helps move food through your bowel faster. This means anything harmful in the food we eat and the waste we excrete spends less time in our bowel, and this may help to prevent bowel cancer. Furthermore, being active and being at a healthy weight reduces inflammation. Too much inflammation can cause our cells to divide more often, increasing cancer risks. Any amount of activity is good for you, but the more active you are, the greater the benefits. You don't need to be a marathon runner or join a gym to be more active. You don't even need to leave your home. Anything that gets you a bit warmer, slightly out of breath, or your heart beating faster counts. Now, let me just summarize how exactly exercise affects cancer prevention. That includes exercise effects on reducing inflammation, helping to regulate blood sugar and sex hormones, and improving metabolism and immune function. Depending on the specific cancer, one or more of these mechanisms may be more important than others. So for breast cancer, for example, the benefits of exercise are really driven through the impact on sex hormones. It can also affect cancer development or risk through reducing obesity, which is a risk factor for many cancers. Well, I hope I have motivated you in this video to start exercising. If you have any questions as to how to get started, please leave a comment below. Until next week, take care. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. If you're interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.